So what makes a, a great, great? I mean, everyone always says that, like, what's a great, how do you become a great player? The one part of it, which I always go back to, is was never, ever going to change is hard work. All the greats that you speak about, you see, you speak to people that have been teammates. One of the elements that they've mentioned before anything is always hard work. You've got to work hard. You work hard, you make your own luck. Little things like that is always in the back of my mind when I played. But another part of it, when you look at greats, you look at, for instance, Cristiano Ronaldo, you have to be obsessed. There has to be some type of obsession with your work ethic, your preparation, your desire, and your will to just keep achieving and achieving and achieving on a year-by-year -year basis. You can't do that without being obsessed. You've got to look at other people and use them as inspiration too. Like Ronaldo without Messi, Messi without Ronaldo, do they build them stats that they've got now? Do they score all these goals? I don't think so, personally. There's an, obs an obsessive nature between them that the other one drives the other one on. You look at all the great uh, greats in, uh, over the years. Magic Johnson, the basketball player, he needed Larry Bird. Larry Bird needed him. Roger Federer, Nadal, they need each other to spur each other on. Djokovic came into the mix. Do you know what I mean? You've got these people that, when you're great like that, you need other people to inspire you and keep pushing you so you can hit new levels. You can set your own targets as well within that, but sometimes there's someone else outside who's pushing you to another level. I needed Nemanja Vidic there. He's setting a standard. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to go past it. I've set a standard. He's going to have to get to my standard. I and mean, you just elevate each other. That competitive edge within a team is what spurs you on to be great together as a, as a, as a collective. You need that individual grit, determination, desire to outdo teammates, to push each other on. And that's what's the great part of being in, in a team because it happens. You don't talk about it. You don't sit there and go, oh, I'm going to be better than him today or I'm going to be better than him over this season. But you know that Cristiano Ronaldo is sitting there looking over at Carlos Tevez get changed and Wayne Rooney get changed in the other corner and thinking, I will be top goal scorer this year. They ain't doing it. I'm going to be top goal scorer. I'm going to help them get to a certain level, but I will outscore them. It's just within players. Ryan Giggs will be looking on the other side, looking at David Beckham going, I'm going to get more assists than him this year. That's my aim. There's my target. He's got four already and I'm on three. Next week, I'm going out to get a couple at least. That is the standard you set yourself as an individual to be great. You look where else there's, there's greatness, you aspire to be that. I keep talking about, but Cristiano is just a great example because when he signed for Manchester United, he was like a young kid. He was 18 years old, I think. And he was about skills. Skills, skills, skills. Wants to please the fans. He was a crowd pleaser. You'd pay just to watch him play football because he was doing step overs, looked brilliant. But he was getting 12 goals, 11 goals, whatever it was. Not many assists as well. And I don't know what it was. He came back one summer and it was just about goals and assists. All this showboating kind of just slowed down and it was about what output he was putting. It was about these stats. I want to be top goal scorer and I want to get assists and that, that means we're going to win. There's a time and a place to, to showboat, but you get the job done first. And that's why he moved into business mode. That's what I call it. He's in business mode. This, is, this guy ain't here to mess about. Straight business, put teams to sleep, put teams to bed, scoring critical goals at great moments. And that's, that's how you become a great player. But what you've got to be is someone that analyzes, that self-analyzes. You've got to analyze every part. It's not just about analyzing my performance. He's the first person, Cristiano, I saw build a team around him, a chef, a nutritionist, a doctor, a physio. Like this guy was doing, investing in himself to become great. He knew where he wanted to get to, but he knew he had to put things in place like people, professionals, at his beck and call. And that cost money, that was time, that was thinking about it, planning, and then putting it into practice. It's not an accident why he is where he's at. It's not an accident that he's the best player in the world. It's not an accident that he scores 40, 50 goals a season for the last 10 or 12 years. He's planned all this, but behind it, the foundations is hard work. Advice comes from all areas, and sometimes they don't even have to ask for it. Sometimes. You learn just by watching. You learn how to be a better pro. When, when Cristiano was young and he first came to United, he lived next door to me. So 
we, we were quite close and we'd done a lot of stuff together. And advice, yeah, I've given him advice over the years. Um, he got to a point in his career where he's playing at such a level that his output is that great that he's just, he's in a rhythm. And the advice doesn't need to come so much. But what it is, is, is people sometimes don't want to be just pushed advice. It's down to them, they want to ask. When they're ready to receive, they'll ask. And Cristiano has been very much like that over the years. And he hasn't, me he hasn't needed much advice. He was very much, I saw when I looked at him when he was young, he was very much as someone who would see people, a bit like myself a little bit, and take bits out of people. Professionalism, the desire, the application, the work ethic. Because that wasn't all there and fixed before he came to Man United. He, he, he kind of added that to his, his armory. He was feed off stuff. Like there's a competitiveness. We'd, I'd play him at table tennis every other day, smash him everywhere. I was, I was, I was too good, but, <laughs> but then he'd come back, he'd practice, he'd say, one more game, one more game. And that's that, just that competitive spirit that just kept, it was within him anyway. And he, he, he fed off other people. And that I'm better than you at this and I'm better than you at that. And like proving to the players around you that what he's good at and what he can do. And, and it's, it's, that's enabled him to get, build confidence and then the trust from us players, seeing what he can do to give it to him in the big moments in games. And it's all part of it. It's a, psych, it's a, it's a big psyche part of it as well that he, he, he had to build within the squad to gain that confidence from us players, to give him the ball when we, we needed it, to keep going to him in times of need in games. And, and, and that comes from the beginning of where he was learning stuff from the players to get to the point of where he became that go-to guy.